Good, how are you? Uh, you might have to adjust these levels of these initially. Mm -hmm. And is Ryan going to turn that off? Mm -hmm. Are you stressed? Are my barking orders at you? No, I'm sorry. I'm just
bleeding like this, but you know. You're there with me? Okay, great. Good morning. It's wonderful to, I can take this off. It's wonderful to have all of you join us today um, for this celebration of the life of Mark Higginbotham. These are odd times that we gather in when we have to be six feet apart and when only so many people can come and the rest are joining us virtually. Um, there are members of Mark's family that are joining us through the live stream. And I don't want to begin the ceremony until we know that they are connected. So, who, who is it of Mark's family, Tom? Uh, Ron and Emily. Ron and Emily? Ron and Emily. Can you communicate, if you're on Facebook, could you chat that yes, you can see and hear? Anyone else? And then my sister Susan and brother Tim. Susan, sis, sister Susan and brother Tim. So I don't know if you can text them and find out if they're online, but I would like to get those family members connected before we actually begin the celebration. Cliff, is anyone texting yeah, yeah, or chatting? Um, Ron, Ron Higginbotham? Ron? Is on. Ron is on, okay. But Tim and, Tim and Susan, are they on? I hope you don't mind us taking this time. I think it's important for the family to be connected with us. So you can talk amongst yourselves. I'm just going <laughs> to talk with them to make sure that they're... Can you, can you text Tim or your sister and see if they are on? They're on? So they can hear. They can hear and see? Okay. okay. So it sounds like... Um, it is working. So, um, again, it's wonderful to have all of you here to celebrate um, this day. Um, a sad day, but a joyful day. Um, we all knew Mark in different ways. And Tom asked that we put this picture in your worship booklet. Um, I'm sorry that the print is small, so I, I am going to read it to you, and then I will tell you why. Once upon a time, there was an old man who used to go to the ocean to do writing. He had a habit of walking on the beach every morning before he began his work. Early one morning, he was walking along the shores after a big storm had passed and found that the vast beach littered with starfish as far as the eye could see, stretching in both directions. Off in the distance, the man noticed a small boy approaching. As the boy walked, he paused every so often, and as he grew closer, the man could see that he was occasionally 
bending down, picking up an object, and throwing it into the sea. The boy came closer still, and the man called out, Good morning. May I ask what it is that you are doing? The young boy paused, looked up, and replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them onto the beach, and they cannot return to the sea by themselves. Then the youth replied, when the sun gets high, they will die unless I throw them back into the water. The old man replied, but there must be 10,000s of starfish on the beach. I'm afraid you really, you won't really be able to make much of a difference. The boy bent down, picked up yet another starfish and threw it as far as he could into the ocean. Then he turned and smiled and said, it made a difference to that one. Mark has made a difference in all of our lives. And the difference that he made is the difference that we will carry wherever we go. For his presence continues to be in our hearts and in all the actions that we do. So in Mark's memory, we will make a difference also. I don't know if you will notice, but when the urn is brought in, you will see a Tiffany silver starfish um, draped on um, the urn holding Mark's remains. Yeah. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Mark. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gates of eternal life, so that in the quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Tom, his family, Mark's family, his friends, and all of us who have gathered. For we ask you to be present in our grief. Surround all of us with your love that we may not be overwhelmed by our loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. There's a remembrance first. Scott's been Mark was my big brother. El Paso, Texas, Gainesville, Georgia, Knoxville, Tennessee, Lilburn, Georgia, Lake Orion, Michigan, Oakland, California. Long Island, New York, and Birmingham, Michigan. These are the eight cities that Mark and I are from. Well, actually, I was only from seven because I was born in Gainesville after that first move. <laughs> and uh, no, we weren't a military family. We were a General Motors family. And our dad got transferred to all these cities as he was climbing the corporate ladder. Growing up for Mark and I was a little different than most, to say the least. The dynamics of moving to a new town, often during the school year, and not having a friend group as a kid was kind of hard. Mark was the consummate big brother that kind of looked after me, and was also kind of large and in charge. Though our childhood years were a bit out of the norm, Mark and I have de facto, were de facto playmates and had lots of adventures growing up, and yes, I'm going to tell a couple stories. Mark took his role of the enforcer very seriously. One, t one time when I was about five and Mark was eight, we lived in Gainesville, Georgia, and shared a room. We had twin beds set up in an L-shape with mine along the wall that the door was on. On this particular night, I had gotten permission from Mom to skip brushing my teeth before going to bed as I had a loose tooth and was kind of freaking out about it. Mark was insistent on me brushing my teeth and did not believe my story of having permission not to. Mark left the room, and when he came back, he had a hammer. <laughs> And he ordered me to get up and brush. I did not, and the next thing you know, the hammer was coming down on my head, and mostly I'm okay now. <laughs> Mark was forgiving. On one of our moves from Michigan to Danville, California, my dad and I were set to drive the family station wagon across country to our new home. Mark and Mom flew to the house to meet the movers and get things set up. I was in third grade and not the best traveler, so Dad and I took five days to make the trip across the country. Among all the stuff we had loaded into the car, I was tasked by Mark to bring his pet hamster across the country. I had the glass aquarium with cedar chips and spinning wheel all set up in the car, and each night when we stopped at the hotel, I would bring it in and feed it and replenish the water, etc. I got to where I really loved this little hamster. Well, we, when we finally made it to California, we ran into trouble. At the border of California, there's an agriculture inspection station and hamsters are not allowed. <laughs> bye bye hamster. I was devastated and was so sad I let my brother down. When we got to the new house and I told Mark the bad news, I had been crying for like two hours. Mark was so gracious and forgiving and thankful for all that I had done to get the hamster there. And then there's the time I backed my 69 Chevy into Mark's freshly restored and painted Fiat Spider convertible that was parked in the driveway. 
forgiven. And more recently, we had grown apart when we had reconnected on a phone call after like a year of not talking. Forgiven. Mark had a mischievous streak and loved to laugh. Loud. Like a machine gun. He loved dogs. He was kind. He was the most hospitable person, always going out of his way to make you feel special and cared for or important to him. Mark was able to write sentences with both hands simultaneously. His left hand writing his first name while his right hand writing his last. In the summer of 1979, I went to a summer camp in Wyoming for three weeks by myself. During the same time frame, Mark and I had developed different tastes in music. Mark, disco, me, classic rock. Leading up to this camp trip, Mark and I, Mark and I had basically Battle of the bands going on at home. <laughs> Dueling stereo speakers at high volume playing our music, just trying to get the other one agitated. <laughs> I don't know how our parents put up with it. Well, when I finally flew back from the camp and the family came to pick me up at the airport, Mark had permed his hair and was wearing bell-bottom jeans and platform shoes. <laughs> he was all in. <laughs> with a big smirk on his face, Mark's first words to me were, rock is dead, disco won. <laughs> By the end of that summer, disco was pretty much done, and thankfully, Mark did not continue to perm his hair. <laughs> in our high school years, Mark was really developing his leadership skills and was manager of the stage crew for our high school drama department. It was a big job, and Mark loved it. I was so impressed with Mark's creativity and sense for design. Elaborate sets were built, and the whole plan for how to transition the sets were all part of Mark's responsibility. In my sophomore year and Mark's senior year, I volunteered for work crew and worked under his leadership. It was a great experience. Mark was also a leader in our youth group at St. James Episcopal Church in Birmingham, Michigan. Mark became an acolyte, and I soon followed in his footsteps and became one also. Mark became head acolyte prior to his senior year, and I think back on, this many, on the many services we served together with a warmness in my heart. Our youth pastor, Father Gus Welkson, or Papa Gus, and Mark were great friends, and Gus poured into Mark and me so well. It was a God thing to have him in our lives at that time, and for Mark, it was the beginning of his devotion to the church that would last the rest of his life. Romans 5 says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he gave, has given us his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came and just, at just the right time and died for us sinners. Mark's passing was a shock. No goodbyes, no warning. All of us here have memories of his joyful personality, forgiving spirit, his other-centered loving ways. My sadness is only comforted by my faith that promises eternal life through the grace and covering of Jesus Christ. 18 years ago, Mark and I lost our dad to a short fight of 110 days with pancreatic cancer. Today, our mom is in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's and we are at Mark's funeral. I found myself thinking the same thought most days since September 24th, that if you had told me 18 years ago this is where I'd be today, I would have said you're crazy. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, Don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Where I am and what I want to... You, where I am and I want you to be is living with this eternal perspective and looking forward with the hope that only can come from the powerful person of Jesus. The things of this world are so temporary and this applies to our earthly bodies as well. Living in Tallahassee, I'm a big fan of former FSU football coach Bobby Bowden. Coach Bowden is now 91 years old and a month ago was diagnosed with COVID-19. He was hospitalized with a severe case but just last week, Coach Bowden was released from the hospital and has recovered. In his interview afterward, he said he realized that the only things of this world that he could take with him to heaven were his kids. 
He went on to explain the peace that only comes from knowing the forgiveness of sins and covering of righteousness that is through Jesus Christ that will allow him to see his kids again in heaven. It is that hope that I cling to today that I will see Mark again in glory. And I urge and pray that we all would seek to share the knowledge of Jesus Christ with our family and loved ones so that we can all do the same. I love you, brother. First lesson, lesson is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalms 139, 1 through 6. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my down and my You my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. Indeed, there is no there is not a word on my lips. But you you press upon me behind and before. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I from your A reading from the book of Revelation. I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are those robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are, not, you are the one that knows. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear up from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give him Jesus. 
It's, it's hard to put words to a service like this. We have a lot of titles and terms. Funeral, Requiem Mass, Celebration of Life. But somehow all those terms feel inadequate to describe what's happening here right now. To begin with, how does one even begin to describe Mark? He was one of a kind. <laughs> He was deeply, deeply spiritual, warm-hearted, genuine, funny, generous, offbeat, at times a little temperamental. He was human, but always a gracious lover of souls. So obviously I have been thinking a lot about him in putting together this homily, and what keeps coming to mind is that Mark belonged, still does, belongs to a time that's maybe not necessarily gone, but it may be passing. And it's hard to say exactly what that time and era is, but what, what comes to mind is a hospitality of spirit. Mark had the ability to welcome people into his orbit and at the same time allow them to be just who they were. There was a spontaneity to his welcome and to his embrace. I actually saw this the first time I ever laid eyes on him, which was here. Uh, at that point, I was the associate rector at St. John's, and I was preaching from the pulpit in the church. And midway on the pulpit side in the pews was this man I had never seen before. But he had this huge smile. He was also carrying this really huge Bible. Um, but it was the smile that caught my eyes. It was Mark, of course. Now, let's be honest. Most people do not bring their Bibles to Episcopal churches. <laughs> so that alone made him stand out. But truly, it was the smile. It was warm and beaming. And now at the same time, I think of the last time I saw him, which was probably several months ago, he had come up to Poway, where I'm now serving at a church up there to have lunch with me. And as he was saying goodbye, he had this big, beaming smile. And so the smile of the first sight and the last sight, in a way, have become like bookmarks. Bookmarks of wonderful, wonderful memories. So in reflecting on that smile and the joy that was so often behind it, it occurs to me that that is exactly how God approaches us, loves us in the present moment. God does not call us and say, please check your calendar to see when we can have lunch so I can love you. 
God just loves us. And despite the fact that too often people try and put boundaries on love, who's in and who's out, we all see that in God and through Jesus, all, all are included in God's embrace, which in turn gives all of us then the power and the ability to abide together in love and be the people we were created, we were dreamed to be by God. So when we think about this, our universal connectedness, why wouldn't we be generous and spontaneous with our love? Why wouldn't we? And yet, at the same time, we must always acknowledge that when we love, we are going to experience loss. We often hear that life is fleeting and short, but most of us don't fully appreciate that until we lose someone we love. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves in this liminal space, uh, a border between what was and what is becoming, acutely aware of our loss and wondering what in the world is next because how we experience this loss is so real. Tom, you know this on a really deep level. Indeed, all of your family and Mark's family, the family. But it's also safe to say that all of us, those present and those who cannot be, um, who love Mark, that his death was too soon and too unexpected. We don't know why. Things happen that are beyond our understanding. But what we do know is that we feel sad, disoriented, and at a loss. What are we to do with these feelings? Well, we all have our own way of dealing with loss, but I think we can take great comfort and wisdom in recalling the words from the funeral liturgy itself. Life is changed, not ended. Life is changed, not ended. These words tell us that God is indeed with us in all the changes of life. Jesus' incarnation, death, and resurrection were not mere signs or omens. They were evidence of the great love God has for us and how we abide in that love, all of us, together, forever. We obviously can't deny that Mark is not with us in the flesh. And we shouldn't deny we miss him. And at the same time, he is still with us. Just differently. He's still here. The Reverend Barbara Craft, an, an Episcopal priest and particularly gifted writer, um, wrote the following from a, a reflection she, she put together upon her father's death. And this is a piece of what she wrote. What a bittersweet pleasure it is, memory. It stings just a bit to feel the ones who've gone before us lingering and looking at us from around the edges of the present time. How wistful a happiness it is and how sweet a loneliness. The earth will turn and the light will grow and grow. A new year will come and a new spring, all of it new once again. They will not be living in it as we do, but neither will they be entirely absent from it. Time is a reality only we have. The kingdom of God is not constrained by its sad limits. We may have lost them for a time, but they have not lost us. Life has changed, not ended. So on this day, and in all the days to come, regardless of any of our personal belief or faith in God, perhaps one of the best ways, or actually some of the best ways we can remember Mark is to one, rejoice that he is in the place that was especially prepared for him by his beloved Jesus and taken there by Jesus. And two, by honoring and living out his hospitality of spirit. To not just think about it, but be kind, gentle, funny, offbeat, inclusive, gracious, and present with one another. And in fact, from now on, maybe one of our mottos can be, 
be like Mark, meaning we're not going to plan on letting people know we love them. We will just do it. It's how Mark followed Jesus. And it's hard to think of a better way to honor our beloved husband, friend, and companion's legacy than to follow Jesus as he did. Let's be like Mark. Reverend Allison, thank you so much for those words. And I, I, I have to say, you made me coming up here now feel a little bit more at ease. Thank you for that. You describe Mark so beautifully. I think of the memories I have of Mark. Golly, it goes back over 20 years. And as I tried to remember all the things that Mark did and all of the, the times we had together and the the different occasions we work together on and the first thing I think of is, is seeing Mark as, as the the acolyte serving at the altar. I see him as our verger leading the procession down the aisle on Sunday morning. But what I remember most about what Mark did in that capacity and that aspect was how he trained those young acolytes we had at St. John's back in those days. They took such great pride in, in what they did and how they performed their responsibilities at the altar and as they came down the aisle for the gospel and had the formation that they, they did and they got ready to have the gospel read. He was amazing. His, the smile that he had, unbelievable. And they loved him. And then I think of, of all the things that we did as the family of St. John's the different occasions that we had, the potlucks, the dinners, the fundraisers that we put together. Who was the lead when we did those things? Mark. Who made things happen? Mark. When I, when I think of the, the potlucks and the, and the dinners that we had, the, the, the food, <laughs> unbelievably amazing. But it, it wasn't just the food with Mark. It had to be the presentation. <laughs> My goodness, like we'd walk into Nail Hall and we'd see all this laid out and you kind of thought like you were at a presidential presentation for kings and queens and who knows what. It was just amazing. Mark was always there at the head. And that smile? <laughs> wow. It, it was just amazing what he did to us, how we felt about him, how he inspired us to achieve, to work, to make things happen. His faith, his faith was unreal. And then we came to that time around, I think it was roughly around 2012, when Mark left St. John's for a period of time. Things happened. That's, and that's, God, God does things, makes things happen in his time. And in his time, things will come back. And so did Mark. Just a couple years ago, I remember standing, I think we were ushering that day, Linda and I, and I looked coming in the door, there's Mark and this, this new guy he's got with him. <laughs> got a tall guy with a big smile on his face. And I was introduced to Tom. Mark was back. Now, I, I have to tell you, honestly, I had a few comments made that, you know, let's not, get, let's not push Mark. He'll, he, he's not ready to get involved again. Uh, he's just here. So eh, I, 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 I threw that right out the window. I just knew that I had to be a little patient. And I realized pretty quickly that Mark was just maybe biding his time a little because every Sunday when he'd come to church, the first thing he'd do when he saw me was ask me what's going on. I was the junior warden at that time dealing with 
property problems and things that junior wardens deal with. But Mark would always ask me, what's going on? How are you doing? What's happening? So I knew, again, with patience, Mark was going to come back full force. And certainly, he started with serving again at the altar, doing those things that he did 20 years ago. That really made me feel good to see that. And then, as I bided my time, I think it was around our, our steak dinner in October 2019, when Mark and I had that conversation that I'll never forget. He kind of came over and, and in Mark's jovial way of getting a point across, let me know that he and God had been talking and God had told him it was time. <laughs> so I said, okay, does that mean you're going to run for vestry? He said, yeah, I am. And okay, Mark, you're going to run for vestry. That tells me that at the end of the year, I will then run again for vestry under one condition. And Mark looked at me and said, what's that? And I said that you accept my nomination for you as junior warden. Now, I, I was waiting for a little bit of hesitation. Didn't get it. Big smile. Okay, we're a team. Let's do it. <laughs> and boy, did he do it. He took over as junior warden this, this magnificent, beautiful church and campus that we have here. He was here on almost a daily basis. Working with contractors, getting bids to fix problems, to, to work on what needed to be worked on. And then lo and behold, what do we get hit with? COVID-19. We have a brand new priest that we prayed for, that we just, what we went through to finally have that happen, to have Reverend Roger as our new priest there were no words to describe what that meant to us. What did it mean to Mark? I gotta take care of him. So Mark was not only worrying about this property and what was going on around here, he was worrying about Reverend Roger as well. And he and I would talk constantly about that. What, how do you describe that kind of service, that kind of faith, that kind of a human being? Look at our church now. All the trees have been trimmed. Our church has been power washed. The gutters have been fixed, screened, and painted. We've had water problems down at the school. Mark worked on making sure that happened. Whenever, and then the great thing about Mark, when, when, they, when he works with these contractors, his talent in negotiation is absolutely amazing. Believe me when I say that, because we say thousands of dollars because of his ability to negotiate. And that's why we are sitting pretty good right now with our beautiful campus that we have here because of Mark. Now, Mark also brought us a new gift, a gift that especially for, for I, mean, I know for all of us, but especially for Linda and I, that new gift was Tom. Mark kind of got the, the four of us together, and he, he brought a book to us with a work a workbook along with it called The Red Sea Rules. Tom and Mark and Lynn and I have been Zooming together once a week, going through that book, dealing with the, the problems that we face in life and, and how to face those with faith, with belief that God is going to always be there with us, taking care of us. Tom, what you and Mark have meant to Linda and I, I, I bet do not have the words to describe how much that means to us. And I truly look forward, Linda and I both truly look forward to continuing that study with you. And I know it's not just with you. When we look at you on that Zoom, I know Mark's going to be sitting right next to you. <laughs> Brother, what you mean to us, there are no words. And I know... I know, and in my prayers, I know that you're fine. You're now up there with our other church family members. You got Reverend Reverend Allie. You got Father Jack. You got Gunny Bob. And who's leading? The, who's leading it up there? Mark. 
I have no doubt who's leading it up there. <laughs> who's got the big smile making things happen, watching over all of us? Our brother Mark. Thank you, Mark. To your family, what a wonderful gift for us, having lived and known Mark. And I know without question, he will be with us. I invite you to please stand as you are able. In the assurance of eternal life given to us at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born to the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> For our brother Mark, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection, and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Mark, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death, at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Mark and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another, social distantly, and I'm sorry to say, without any touch. Peace, peace, peace. I invite you to please be seated. asked me to speak um, on behalf of Mark a few days after his passing, and uh, I was delighted that he um, asked me that, at the same time scared, because I'm not a public speaker. I'm a salesperson. Mark and I work together at the hotel. So I thought about it, and of course I said yes right away, um, but I thought, well, I had once heard a comedian say, if you're talking in front of a crowd, just to picture everybody with uh, in their underwear. So today, I'm picturing all of you without your masks off. So just FYI. Um, I first met Mark. He was working at the Sheraton. I'm at the U.S. Grant downtown. And um, I had heard the name before, but 
never really met him in person. And we were at some networking event or some cocktail party or something and comes over to me, larger than life, with this huge smile on my face. You're Ed Kutch, I've heard so much about you, I've heard great things, and just like right away, built me up, built up my confidence. And ever since then, we were fast and furious friends. Um, and then about two years later, we got the chance to work together at the U.S. Grant. I loved the U.S. Grant, Mark loved the U.S. Grant, I think everybody knew that. He was the director of sales, I was the assistant director of catering. And we were two fabulous gay guys working together at this great hotel. We did amazing things. Um, and we had a lot of the same ideas, um, creativity, and, and things like that. And we had this pretty much the same taste when it came to um, shopping and things like that. So um, Mark always had a, a blue bag in his office or a blue box. It was usually for Tom. I had a blue bag in my office, but it was from Ross. But, you know, it was blue. <laughs> so um, he, his taste was a little bit more expensive than mine. But we did really have fun working together. Um, and he always supported me in my role. I, he was my direct report, and I was learning my position. And, you know, whether it was something new that we were learning, he was just always supportive in every possible way. So I really appreciated that. Um, then about a few years later, you know, Tom came into the picture, and... Um, just like I am with Carlos, it was a love affair like I had never seen before. He always spoke very highly of Tom, and of course Tom of Mark too. Um, I was lucky enough to be Mark's best man at the wedding. And it just kind of reminded me a lot of, of our life together. You know, here we have, everybody else spoke a little bit differently. I'm on the other side, the friendship side. I'm not the most spiritual person in the world. Maybe I will be after today. Um, <laughs> But it just was always remarkable to me and, um, like I said, reminded me a lot of my relationship. But the love that those two have for each other is just something that you can't, you can't dismiss. You know, it's, he's not here in person, but he's not, uh, not going anywhere as far as he's here, you know, and you know that. So um, then moving fast forward to about six months ago, and, you know, Mark and I kept in touch. We don't live that far from each other. But he called me, and he said uh, he needed to talk to me and that he was struggling. And I said, okay, well, we all have times in our life when we, we need somebody to lean on. And I said, I'm here for you no matter what. And we talked every, every couple of weeks. We probably had a nice little conversation. And then, um, and then I got the call and, and that was it. And that was you know, the last conversation we had, but um, we've talked since. And uh, I know he's looking down on us, but I really appreciate the friendship. And I know, once you don't know Tom, that we will always be here for you. We're, we're close in proximity and close, uh, close here. So, thank you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. When our mortal bodies lie in death, there is prepared for us a place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and the love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and the redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do it, do it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to your command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. John, Mark, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. If you wish to receive communion, I invite you to remain standing. Um, Allison, Kathy, and I will come around to you. I invite you to extend your arm as far as you are able, and we will extend ours so that we can receive um, social distantly. Um, if you do not wish to receive but would like a prayer, you can just cross your arms over your or be seated. I invite you to stand as you are today. Please join me in our post communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. You have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And 
and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom, for there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris. I'm Thompson. I want to thank everyone for coming out on this occasion. Sad occasion. Um, I really didn't know how to start this or which stories I wanted to tell. It actually took me a long time to actually come up with words to describe the impact Mark had on my family and myself. Before Mark, my father and I had a very big falling out almost two years prior to meeting Mark. We kept in contact, but there wasn't a real relationship. In mid-2013, my dad said he met someone and felt it was a time to meet him, to meet Mark. Mark ended up getting us a room at the grant where he was working at the time. He never introduced himself until the morning of breakfast. You could tell when Mark walked into the room. You definitely knew Mark was in the hospitality business. He brought a glow to the room. Granted, it might have been the purple jacket that he could pull off. But the way he presented himself to his employees, the respect that they gave him, he was sincere and could tell he had a good heart. After that, he was full force. The girls loved Papa Mark, and he adored them. I'd get all the time from my friends, hey, how's your dad and Mark? He was just so outgoing. <laughs> he would go with my dad to the girls' soccer games, softball, and even when I was playing soccer, they would come out. And when Mark entertained, Mark entertained. You could never just go over there for dinner expecting a basic dinner. It was a full 12 course meal and about 50 appetizers. <laughs> Mark was a huge impact to my father. He helped my father and I have a great relationship. I know my dad probably for uh, years couldn't be the person who he is today. I love Mark for that. You could tell they were truly in love. Through the many great times, to the struggle everyone faces. He was caring, loving, genuine person but he's also his favorite line, you bitch. <laughs> By the people here today and online, you can tell he had a meaningful impact in our lives. Remember the great times and forget about the issues you might have had. Thank you all for coming. Please stand as you are able. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. With sorrow and You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth we shall return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, you, shall, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Mark. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Sing with all the saints in 
glory, sing the resurrection song. Death and sorrow, earth's dark story, to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking, soon the storms of time shall cease. In God's likeness we awaken, knowing everlasting
Thanks be to God.